Good morning, Floss Tube. I'm Deb, our science knitster, um, on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and it is Sunday, August 2nd. This is a podcast about um, cross stitch and knitting, but today it's all about knitting. Oh, excuse me, it's all about cross stitch. <laughs> oh, too much sleep deprivation this summer. Anyway, um, welcome back to those of you that um, have been following me. Um, if you've subscribed, thank you very much. Um, I think I'm up to like 55 subscribers now. Like, wow. <laughs> so um, that's pretty exciting. Um, and if this is your first time, welcome. Um, you'll see I'm a little crazy. Um, but um, it's all in fun and um, I do at the very end of the video, I've been doing what I call a public service announcement, but um, I'm a scientist by training and, I, and I'm a science educator by profession. I teach at the local community college. I'm also chair of uh, the Department of Math and Science there. And, um, and I'm in the um, lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas. So um, we have a lot of COVID here. Um, we're one of the hot spots in the country. So often my, what I call my PSAs are, are about COVID, but um, I think I really want to have it be more than about that and, and more about science in general. And I hope as, if, if I keep doing this, if people are interested and I keep doing this, that they will eventually expand and, and get more into the, to different areas of especially biology because that's my area um, that that I teach in and my area of expertise um, I actually have a PhD in genetics um, so and and I live in a very beautiful part of the country um, we have a lot of cool wildlife here um, and where I live like the apartment that I live in I have stuff that just walks by um, I live right on what's called the Rasaka which is a <clears throat> Um, for Yankees, that's a, an, an oxbow. Um, if you know what that is, that's a like an old path of a river that is now cut off from the main river. But down here, they call them resacas. Um, and um, the water level in them is controlled somewhat. But I live right, like right on one. It's like right out. It's my sliding glass door right there. And I can see the water. Yesterday, a great egret just walk by on the sidewalk. Um, I see um, parent ducks with their little ducklings and things like that. And so I hope eventually I'll be able to talk about those kinds of things too. So I think I'm just gonna call it the science section instead of public service announcement. So, um, so I have something for the science section at the end today. Um, and if um, you're really not in interested in that, I'll, I'll let you know when it's starting. So you can um, can switch it off, but I hope you'll you'll listen, because as a science educator, um, I feel part of my job is to uh, help the public understand science better. So I said this was going to be about cross stitch today. So let's get started with the cross stitch. So first, I want to show you a few things I've been working on. Um, I didn't have very much stitching time this week, this past week, uh, until the weekend. Um, it was very busy. We're getting to the end of our second summer session, and then we're also planning to be on remote instruction for the fall, so there's a lot happening. Um, and this coming up week is probably going to be just as busy, busy if not busier, because I've got different things due, and, and I plan on taking next Friday, this or this coming Friday, end of the week, when I'm done for the day, and hopefully that's by 5 o'clock. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, I, I'm like turning off my my mail, my work mail notifications. I'm putting up one of those automatic replies that I will not be reading my email. I'm just taking the week off. Um, I'm hoping things will have will be safe enough for me to travel to Corpus Christi, which is where my husband lives and, and has a business as a flower farmer, but we'll see. But anyway, um, Let's get started with the cross stitch. We're like five minutes in and I haven't shown you any cross stitch yet except the stuff behind me. Okay, 
So um, the main thing I've been working on and that not very much this week is, um, and I forgot to get the pattern out. I thought I was all ready. Okay, so this is um, Uber Flag by Bent Creek. And um, I've been doing several of these. I've done, I've worked on, I've worked on, trying to think. Have I worked on all of them? Yes. I, I, when I started this one, I had started all of them. I have finished two. The Easter and um, the Shamrock, which is for, for St. Patrick's Day. So eventually... I will finish all of them, but I'm a very seasonal stitcher. So like sort of once the season has passed, I'm kind of like, I don't feel this anymore. So if I don't finish it. So if this one doesn't get finished like in by Labor Day, it won't get finished till next year. <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, so here's my progress. So I finished the background stitching on the your part. And then I started stitching the next um, white-ish um, stripe. Um, so I actually, what I, I plan to do is, um, oh, I can put it here. Um, there's words here too. In each of the white stripes, there's words. So in this stripe, um, I just started because I had the, the, it's like eight, I think that's 822. I had that out um, and I didn't feel like counting. Um, that's the other thing. When I'm really tired, I need to work on something where I don't have to count. So um, sometime this week, I'll probably put the word in and then um, then I can get back to stitching the background, the, the words, I should say, on that stripe in and, and get back to stitching on the background. It's nice, like, if I have um, webinars I have to listen to or, or meetings I have to attend but don't have to participate in, which are few and far between. Most of the ones I'm in, I'm either running or I'm quite involved in. Um, but it for if I don't have to be actively involved in the meeting, I just have to kind of be there in case there's questions I can answer or something like that. Or, or if, like I say, I'm watching a, a webinar for professional development. These kind of projects are really nice to have on the go and ready to just like stitch background where I don't have to do any counting. So, um, so I will continue to work on this one, um, but I will, I, I need to talk about that later, my plans for August. Um, the other thing I worked on a little bit this week, um, this past week, and I think most of my progress was last Sunday after I recorded um, my floss tube, but is um, Mary Manatee. Oh, and I forgot to say, I'm using all the called for threads and I'm stitching, um, the Ubers are stitched, uh, are called for um, 18 count linen. And sometimes they tell you which sort of neutral color the model was stitched in and sometimes they don't. And um, that's probably natural light or natural linen. Um, I'm not sure which. Um, I lost the packaging a long time ago and never wrote down what it was. I was uh, and I'm actually keeping track of stuff in X Stitcher, um, but I didn't when I when I bought all the materials for that. So um, next project, Mary Manatees by Lindy Stitches, um, and I am using um, the called for threads except for um, the yellow that the fishes are in. Um, I'm using the DMC uh, instead. And what else? Oh, um, this calls for 32 count sterling from Picture This Plus. I had uh, 28 count um, Ariel, and so that's what I'm using. So let me show you my progress. This is my last recording, my last video. Let's see. So um, if you watched last week, I was um, working on the baby manatee's tail. So I finished the baby manatee's tail and I decided to start s stitching the letters. Um, and so I, I was working on this I, on the 25th of August, last Saturday, 
for um, Mary 25 stitching. And then I decided I had said I would work on it um, the rest of the week uh, as my contribution to Christmas in July. <laughs> but um, like I said, I think I only worked on, I finished the tail, I think Sunday night or maybe Monday. And then um, this, I put in the Y and then actually I put in the two R's yesterday or finished the Y and put in the two R's yesterday morning. So really August while um, I was watching um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy's um, Stitch With Me that she had recorded on Thursday, I think. Uh, and, and she was stitching on her Christmas project, um, which I bought the pattern when she was having a sale last month, month before, I forget. Um, anyway, um, so I decided to stitch on my Christmas thing, even though it was August. <laughs> um, but this is going to get put away until the 25th of August. I forget which day of the week of that is, um, but hopefully I'll be able to get some stitching time in that day. Okay, so let me put that aside. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and show this now. So the other thing that I've made a little progress on, very, very little, <laughs> is Jane Fittis. I am participating in the Hands Across the Sea um, samplers. Uh, Jane Fittis, 1835 Sal. I'm part of the Facebook group. Um, and what else do I want to say about that? Um, I haven't gotten very far. We started July 4th, and I did start that day. Um, but uh, my LNS, um, Judy Stitrinuk had to order uh, some of the silks for me, so I, I just started with the colors that I had from her. And um, she has since gotten most of the other colors in, and I've been I'm, um, I'm trying to be good and not spend too much money all at one time. Yeah, that's not working out very well. Um, I think I've said a couple weeks ago, like all the money I used to spend going to Starbucks for a latte every day, uh, and, and sometimes breakfast, I'm now spending on stitching stuff. <laughs> and I'd probably be buying knitting stuff too, but I'm not knitting right now because I've got a sore wrist. So anyway, so I am enjoying Jane. So let me show you what I'm doing. I am using the called for, um, the called for um, Overswa 103, and this is my first time using these, and I love them. Um, and I am stitching. Oops. Let me get this stuff. Uh, let me just put stuff back or away, off to the side, out of the way. Um, okay. So this is my progress so far. So those are the called for um, threads. There's also a conversion for Averisois d'Alger and um, DMC. So I am, let me see if I can get a little bit closer and not get it in my tea. <laughs> there you go. I am, oh, the color of, um, the fabric is a little off. It's a little bit browner than it's showing. Um, uh, maybe that's a little bit closer. And there's a there is a little bit of as as Julie McConnell says in her her chart of the day videos. There's a little bit of movement in in the actual color that's not coming across in the in the picture. Um, but it is 36 count, 36 or 37. Pretty sure it's 36. 36 count Sparrow from um, Luminous Fiber Arts, um, Misty Purcell. Um, and it's been beautiful to work with. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I have some 40 count and some Linda 
also with Sparrow that I haven't worked with yet, but this, I mean, just, I, I'm stitching this in hand, which I will, um, probably I'll put it on a frame for some of the specialty stitches just because it'll be easier. Um, but after watching, I used to always stitch in a frame, like never not stitch in a frame. Because I started off in embroidery and you always have it in a hoop, right? Um, and um, where was I going with this? <laughs> I need to turn off the sound on my phone. That thing of my work email distracted me. Um, okay. Back to cross stitch. Anyway, um, so it, this has just been beautiful to work with, hold to hold in the hand. Um, and, and I used to always stitch on a frame or a Q snaps or, or a hoop. But um, after watching people like Nicole, Nicole's Needleworks and Kitten Stitcher, I decided to try stitching the hand in, and I do enjoy it. Um, for when I'm um, using, having to use two threads, um, I stopped laying my stitches. <laughs> And um, so, you know, unless it's something like you're doing satin stitch or something like that, where the stitches absolutely ha have to lay straight, um, I, I don't lay my stitches anymore, my cross stitches anymore. Um, I used to always lay my stitches. So, because I was stitching in a frame. It's, it's just really hard to use a laying tool when you're stitching in hand. Um, somebody knows how to do that or knows about a video on how to do that, please share. Okay, so that, that is Jane Fittis, and I'll actually come back to Jane Fittis in a minute. So that's, um, oh, I tell a lie. I worked on some things yesterday and today, but yeah, I'll do this first, and I'll, I'll do my little bit of haul at the end. Um, so right now, as of August 1st, I decided... Um, I would copy Michelle Bendy Stitchy and participate in Arbitrary August on the weekends and um, in a Hands Across the Sea related stitch in, uh, sal, um, stitch along. And I was gonna look up the name, the hashtag. So Arbitrary August is the hashtag for what I'm gonna do on the weekends and I'll explain that in a second. And the other thing I'm participating in, I just need to go to my latest picture um, cause I, I have it there. It is the Cozy Egg Hats B-Day birthday day sale. So it's, um, and I've forgotten her name and I'm sorry. Um, but Cozy Egg, apparently this is her birthday month. Um, I'm participating not because I know Cozy Egg, but because I know Michelle Bendy Stitchy, at least, um, through floss tube, and um, and I like hands across the sea samplers, and I have two on the go right now, so I thought, why not? So maybe I'll get to know Cozy Egg a little bit during this sale. That would be cool. I've I've gotten to gotten to know lots of folks um, the last several months through floss tube and Instagram and and different groups on Facebook. Um, because of stitching and it, it's wonderful. Okay, so so what does that mean for what I'm doing in August? Well, during the week, um, at least Monday through say sometime on Friday, depends on how I'm feeling, I will be working on either Jane Fittis or Mary Eliza McMillan, which I did not have time to work on this week. Mary Eliza McMillan is one of the Hands Across the Sea Little Gems. So you can so you can see this is a printout. It's not a booklet like I showed you for Jane Fittis. Um, so this is one of the ones where you can go to the Hands Across the Sea um, Samplers website and purchase and download. Um, if you don't want to do that, but you want it, you can also um, purchase it through your local needlework store. So. Um, so let me just show you. So you can see where I'm at as we get as I get started with the Cozy Egg Hands Across the Sea or Cozy Egg Hats B Day Sal. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit harder to show. So so I'm actually quite far along. 
I've got the border all in, um, a lot of the motifs. I still have a lot of motifs, all the motifs here to do. And um, the original uh, wording here, and then the wording that Nicola Parkman, who um, reproduced the sampler, put in, in, in uh, to commemorate COVID. Um, so I need to do that. So I will probably, I'll either start working on some of the motifs in here, or um, probably the down here. That, that's what I had planned to do this last week, but not much stitching time. And I decided to work on Jane Fittis yesterday instead of this one um, because it was the first of the month and the Jane Fittis um, Sal group on Facebook has on the first of the month, uh, starting July 1st, or actually July 4th, and now for the, for the first of the from now on the first of the month, there's a there's like a meeting where um, the the person who's who's leading the group um, has a live um, it's basically a live stitch with me, but she's really she's she's giving you clues um, about some of the stitches um, at, because there's a lot of new stitchers in the group, which is great. Um, so I I am using I'm. My brain just is not all here right now. Um, so I'm using 28 count legacy. Um, I'd pref be preferring to stitch this on like 36 or, or at least 32, but um, this is what I had in my stash when I went and I, when I, the, this little gem came out, I wanted to start it right away. So, um, so I'm using the called for DMC. Um, and I should have mentioned last week I'm using the called for DMC except for one color. And that's this color here that I used on the border. So um, it turned out, so the original color I believe is 370, let me check. Yes, 370, DMC 370. Um, and I must have had like a really, really old, like before, I know periodically they have updated their colors a little bit and either it was really, really old or it was mislabeled because um, what I used was from a package of, of um, leftover or bobbinated or packaged threads that I had bought at a, um, I think it was EGA or Embroidery's Guild or, or, or um, American Needlepoint Guild um, local, like a, they were doing a little fundraiser um, where you could they package just a bunch of stuff and you could buy it fairly cheaply. It was stuff people had donated and it was just using um, to um, raise money for the chapter. Um, so either it was mislabeled or it was so old that the color has changed since. But when I ran out and ordered more because I hadn't paid attention and realized that um, the instruction said if you're stitching on 32 count or lower, you might need two of these, or you will need two of these. Um, so when I ordered some more, 370, it just, it was much brighter. And I was like, oh, that's not right. What did I do? Um, and by then I was like all the way around here. I was down to here, down to here on this side and like about, or, about here on this, about there on this side. So I was like, I am not taking that out because the color changed. And it was, I started putting this one in and it was just too different. So um, I took out the little bit that I'd put in and I was like, well, let me see what, is there a color that th that is closer to what the color used to be? And so I just did a little investigation online and found that, um, the thing that is closest now, and, and I can't really tell a difference, is 610. So it, uh, so I, I, uh, for the rest, I'm using this 610 to finish. Uh, I used the, to, that to finish my border. So, um, and wherever three, I don't think 370 is called for anywhere else. So, um, so that's the only one that I'm using that is not called for. But I was just happy I could find something that um, I could tell no difference in. 
Okay, so, so I'm gonna be working on either of those during the week. Um, and, um, but I'll also occasionally be working on my Uber flag. And um, there's a couple of pieces that I've been wanting to start their summer, summer related things. And so I'm gonna go ahead. Um, I don't know if I'll get to start them this week, um, but next week when I'm on vacation um, or off from work, I should say, cause I'm not sure I'm going anywhere. Um, when I'm off from work, I will, um, if I haven't started them yet, I will start them and they'll, they are actually already in my rotation um, for Arbitrary August. Excuse me, which I'll be doing on the weekends. Um, and I'm using the Tiny Decisions app um, that Michelle Bendicity recommends. And I've already put all the whips that I'm, I'm including in Arbitrary August and those two new starts in. So actually if one of them pops up, for next weekend, I'll, and I haven't started yet, I'll go ahead and start it then. If not, I'll, I'll start it the next week. So um, the first two, so I wasn't gonna start till today, but I, I actually got myself organized faster than I thought I would. And I was organized by late yesterday afternoon and I already had everything in the Tiny Decisions app. So I went ahead and gave it a whirl. And lo and behold, what came up? Mermaid Fracture. If you've been following me since the beginning, this was one of the pieces that I started as part of my Mermania, Stitch Sania for Mania in May. Um, so I was able to do a little bit on this yesterday and okay, I cheated a little bit and finished like maybe 10 more stitches when I was talking to my family this morning. So um, let me show you my progress on this. If I can, where the heck did I, oh, there it is. <laughs> I told you sleep deprivation. Okay, so um, I had the mermaid outline pretty much all done. Um, some of the scales, um, this, these here, I didn't have the scale part in yet, but, um, and I had just a little bit of the red up here done. So I, I completed, we finished in the red and those other scale colors. That's a pelican gray. So I'm using all of the called for threads, which are a mix of, uh, so yeah, they're all over dies. They're a mix uh, of Gentle Arts and Weak Sky Works. And I'm also using the called for linen, which is 32 count sea fog. I believe 32 yeah no I'm sorry 36 count sea fog and I am stitching with one thread over two linen threads and and I'm happy with the coverage I know some people prefer to stitch with um with two threads even on 36 count but but I'm liking this well, you can't tell right so um So she will go away unless she, she comes up again or unless I fall off the wagon and decide not to just stitch on an arbitrary August piece during the week. We'll see. And that might happen next week while I'm on holiday, uh, but I really wanna finish Mary Eliza McMillan and I think I can finish her next week. I really do. I do. Um, then the other thing that came up, oh, it's over here, it's not with the rest of my things. The, um, the thing that popped up for today, so I decided each day on the weekend I would, I would spin. Um, and so what came up for today, uh, it reset itself. What is um, Light by Barbara Anna. So this is part of the Fox in a Dress Sal that Michelle Bendy Stitchy and I forget who else um, started. March, April? A while ago. Um, I think, yeah, Michelle has finished hers and quite a few folks, other folks have finished theirs. But um, I got stitching on other things like Mary Eliza and um, she got put away. Um, 
but she's back out. So this morning after I uh, finished putting in the tail, <laughs> um, I um, started putting the white in down here. Um, you can see. So um, I was stitching the background, but um, I decided I think I want to put the white and the gray in down here and then just fill in. And as you can see, I still need to finish the garland or border, um, the light, and then, um, and of course the feet and the little city down here. There are a ton of mistakes in here, some of which I pulled out, most of which I just left and wrote notes so that um, I know not to count from certain places. <laughs> Sometimes you got to take them out. Sometimes you can live with it. So I'm going to be working on this today while watching other floss tube. Um, so I wanted to um, spend the rest of my time today. And I was like, it's one of these days, I'm going to keep one of these at like 30 minutes. We'll talk about that in a minute. So these are in no particular order. Um, but the other thing, other whips that are in, and I think I'm just gonna show the patterns and maybe next week I'll show progress um, just for the sake of time. Um, oh, what the heck, you guys probably wanna actually see the project, right? Right? Okay, so this is gonna be a long one, sorry. I try to, I've been trying to keep them shorter because personally, because I'm very busy, um, I tend to watch the shorter ones first, like Nicola's um, and uh, Julie McConnell's um, Tart of the Day. They're usually 20 minutes or less. And I can usually watch that while I'm eating lunch or while I'm eating breakfast and I don't feel too guilty for spending the time. And, and I hate to cut them off in the middle Although that's what I've been doing lately. So like right now, I've watched the first half hour of the latest Sunshine Stitchers. And so when I'm done with this, I will go back to watching that and stitching. Although I do have to do some work today. So I'm ready to get a jump on the week and not scramble in tomorrow morning. Okay, back to cross stitch. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the pieces I have like 12 or 13 or 14, I forget. So more than I could work on, but whatever. I might pull out some of these during the week if I get bored with samplers, mm, probably not. Um, but this is Flowers from the Sea by Barbara Anna Designs. And I just love the colors in this. I love, love, love this one. Um, so I, I would really like to finish it. Um, so where I got, if you, um, have watched my Mermenia episodes. You already know this, but um, so I'm using the called for linen, which is dirty linen, 32 count. I'm using the called for DMC, and um, and this is where I got. Isn't she the cutest? So um, I think I can finish this this summer. I think I can. Right? Fall doesn't start until September 20 something, 21st, 20, I forget what the date is this year. So I could still finish it in summer. Okay, so that's one. Here's another one. I'm not sure I've shown this one. I may have shown it like early on as one of my whips. Um, I'm not going to show the threads because they're just kind of in there. I, they're, um, well, let me just show you one of them. They're thread gatherers, um, and and so I haven't I haven't put them on a ring. I probably should. I've been making my own thread drops. I should probably make my own thread drops for these. It'll be easier to keep them organized. But so it's um, bright needle, sweet summer sampler, and it's just so sweet. I love bright needle. I wish they were still designing. Um, but here she is. 
I am stitching on the called for linen, which is um, 32 count, um, 32 count water lily, um, and that's by Witchelt. And where did I put my thing again? So, so this is, I put in basically some leaves and then I realized I was using the wrong color. <laughs> so I haven't, I still haven't decided if I'm going to take that out and start over or what I'm going to do. Um, I may start putting in some other parts of it and see how the colors go. Um, haven't decided. And if it pops up on the decision wheel, I'd have to decide. So until then, I can just keep thinking about it. So I'm using the call for threads on the call for linen. Um, I don't, I don't know. You may still be able to find the chart um, at, especially at needle workshops that aren't online. Um, and have a lot of older charts still in their inventory. Um, and here's another bright needle. This one was started during Romania. Again, I'm not sure if you can still find this chart anywhere. Um, maybe eBay. This is Under the Sea. I am stitching it with the called for threads, except that I subbed all the DMCs for the called for anchors. Um, I am not stitching it on the called for linen, which was, I believe, Americana blend. Where did they have that info? Yes, 32 count Americana blend. I could not find it anywhere online when I was kitting this up and my LNS didn't have it. So um, I just kind of searched and what color is this? Shoot. I don't have it written down and it's been a while I didn't know at one time um did I write that down no it's in x stitch and I forgot to look it up it is definitely 32 count and it is um a witch alt and I'm not gonna think of the name so if I, um, I'll look it up and put it in the description when I, when I put my notes in. So this is as far as I got. What's nice is there's some Krynik in her tail and it gives it a little bit of a shimmer. I don't know if you can see that. So, so that was that. This is going to be a really long one. I've got several more to show you. And then, ah, this one is Brick House by, with my needle, by Brenda Gervais. Um, so the call for is to do it on, uh, over one on 32 count Lugana, which um, my friend Susan and I, decided not to do instead and if you saw less <laughs> okay now it's gonna be like which is the right side oh where the needle is so we decided well I suggested let's try over two on 52 count and Susan's like eh. and then what did she do she went and ordered some from kitten stitcher 32 count natural linen so of course I had to do the same thing so this is as far as I got. Susan's gotten a lot farther. Um, I'm trying to remember when I started this, but I got into the, I think it, it was before I had started Mary Eliza McMillan. And that's just been really, um, until very recently, really calling my name. So, so this is in, this could come up. And if it does, I will work on it. Oh, I am using the called for threads. And, and the linen is a, a natural, natural linen. Okay, I'm just gonna take good time. I'm just gonna throw it over there. It's gonna take me forever to clean up after this. 
Okay, oh, so this one I don't have a picture of. Um, it's a, a Mystery Sal um, by Linens and Threads, um, Fox and Rabbits Designs, um, and there's a group for it on Facebook. Um, and the idea was you, you pick your own, they don't give you any colors. You pick your own, you can do it monochrome, you can do it all different colors, however you wanna do it. Um, and mine is on, I decided to do it on 40 count Witchell, um, no, I'm sorry, Lakeside Linen Wisteria. I think it's Lakeside, it might be Witchell. It's late, the color is Wisteria and it's 40 count that I got from my LNS. Um, and I decided to at least start it in DMC 310. Um, it's 40 count, so I'm just using one strand. And I, um, I'm sorry, not 310. I did the last that the last time too. It's 311. 311. Okay, so I'm using 311, and I think I'm gonna do it all in 311. I haven't gotten very far. I haven't worked on this in a while. Okay, that was a fast one. Let's throw it back in here really quickly. So my um, my EGA chapter, some folks are doing that as their, their challenge for the year. Oh, I'm getting stuff all over the place. Another Mermenia, Stitch Samia. Some of the threads are in there. <laughs> These are, I've got most of the threads on a wing. I need to put it on thread drops and I've kind of been doing, I'm, I've started doing that um, for some of my other projects, but I hadn't started for this one. So this is Hawk Run Hollow, The Shores of Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Sampling. Um, I've had this chart, I think, since it came out and the linen and finally started it for Mermania Sashania because mermaid. Um, I would really like to get back to this. It's just, there's so many things to stitch and so little time. So the call for linen is 40 count um, vintage autumn gold, which is what I am using. And the color's not quite coming across. It's more gold, goldy than that. So, um, so I, I kind of just stitched to where I could um, get to where the mermaid was because my, my goal was to get the mermaid done, but that didn't happen. Um, it was right at the end of the semester. So I think I'm actually going to come back here and start there if I, this one comes up. And I'm using the DMC conversion that's in the chart. Beautiful colors. I need to get those on my, my drops that I'm making for myself. Quick, 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 quick like a bunny. It's not complete chaos when I'm finished. Four more. This is gonna be an hour by the time I'm done. So I think there will be no PSA at the end of this one. Um, maybe very short. Uh, Personal is Political by Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, I have used some of the called for colors, um, but I did make some substitutions. Um, all of the over dyes are substituted. Some of the DMCs are. I am using Picture This Plus. Arbor, which is the closest thing I had in my stash. Let me get the threads out. Actually, if this one pops up, I could finish it. I am so close. If I like really put some time into it on a, a stitchy day. So here it is. I just love this color. It's pink with um, some green through it. And it's just, I feel like it's just perfect for this pattern and, and especially the changes that I had to make because I didn't have the called for threads and I wanted to start it. So I just got my over dies out and picked some things that I thought would work. Um, and I replaced some of the DMCs with over dies too. 
So um, there's that one. And I am planning to personalize it a little bit. I just haven't decided exactly how. I do wanna, I'm using it for the um, diversity and inclusion cell and um, representation matter cell. And, and I wanted to somehow commemorate what's going on, what's come to the forefront with um, Black Lives Matter and and the protests going on this summer. So um, let me do one more, that's a whip, and then I'll show you the two um, new starts I wanna do. So here's another Lindy Stitches. Um, this is a stitch for sweet freedom. Um, I had already purchased this from Lindy Stitches. Um, obviously, this is a PDS, PDF download that I purchased from her, from her Etsy shop. Um, and I should say I purchased um, Personal is Political from my local needlework store because number one, I wanted to support Judy, Judy Stitchery Nook. And number two, I didn't want to wait and because um, Michelle and and many other designers. I, I think it's Stephanie of Lindy's. Lindy Stitches does the same thing. They they release first through the local needlework stores and then later release it on their Etsy shop as PDF download. Um, so I started this one for um, Diversity Matters and, and um, I'm sorry, um, Representation Matters and the, oh yeah. Oh. I got most of my threads on a ring. Not all of them. Oh, because I'm still choosing some of them. That's why. There's a method to my madness. Okay. So this is uh, all I've accomplished so far. Uh, this is, again, the same 40 count wisteria that I'm doing that mystery sampler on, that mystery Quaker sampler. And... And I'm using mostly the call for threads. I did um, substitute for the blue that um, Stephanie had, Dental Art Uniform Blue. I actually, um, and she said the DMC sub was 413. Because of the fabric that I'm using, I decided that 930 was better. So that's the blue that you see here. So hopefully this will come up. Um, because it's really pretty and I love the sentiments. So um, I hopefully I'll get a chance to work on this one this month or I might just anyway. Like I said, while I'm on my not working week, my holiday, my staycation, it might be a real vacation, but it's not looking too good right now. Um, I may just work on some other things during the week. Or I may try to do some FFOing, I don't know, or some quilting. Or something that won't bother my wrist. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna show the pattern for these and I'll, if I end up getting to, if it comes up on the wheel, I'll go ahead and um, show you the materials that I'm using. Um, for this one, actually, it, the linen came, and buttons came in a kit. This is one of the Boxer Juniors from Lizzie Kate. It's an old one. Um, I've done winter and spring, so this is summer, so I'd like to get this done. Winter, I did a long time ago, and my friend Susan, my BFF Susan, um, actually did the finishing for me, um, and I'm going to um, finish... Spring I need to finish, and then if I get summer and fall done, I'll finish them the same way. They're just little um, flat, what we call, we call them padded mat boards. Other people call them something else, like flat folds or something, I don't know. Um, and then the other thing that I was hoping to, to start last week, and no time, is actually a gift from Susan. Um, she kitted up for me. So she was part of this club um, uh, from the Fat Quarter Shop. And when she, after she stitched and finished hers, she um, re-kitted it for me and, and sent it to me. So um, I have the linen version of the kit. And so it comes with all the DMC. So I'll be using the called for fabric and the called for DMC 
Uh, but I'm okay. So people that know me know that it's a tough call for me to say, are my favorite flowers sunflowers or blue bonnets? It's tough. Yellow is my favorite color. So some days, sunflowers win. They just make me happy. And yellow makes me happy. So that's actually it. Yes, this is the bag I had them all in. Um, this is a beautiful bag, actually. Um, okay, this is not stitching related, but I'm a, a lifetime member of the of SACNAS, the Society for the Advancement of Chicanos slash Hispanics and Native Americans in Science. And um, in 2008, I was awarded by the organization a mentoring award for mentoring undergraduates in research. Um, that's when I, I worked at a different institution. And um, this was part of what we were given. It's beautiful um, weaving. Um, oh shoot, I didn't know I was gonna do this. So I still have like the tag that came with it. So I know where this came from, but um, you know, the idea was the, the weaving represented Native Americans. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I also weave, I'm a, I'm a relatively, well, I'm a beginning weaver. I've, I've finished two projects, <laughs> a scarf, skinny little scarf and a um, basically a table scarf that's Christmassy. Um, maybe sometime I will show. Do I still have? I think I the scarf was given away as a gift but I, I think I put a picture on Ravelry. The table scarf is for me so um, I still have it. Maybe sometime I will show that. Actually, I'm, I'm hoping to get some weaving in during my holiday also. So um, that's what I have. I know I had said last week, for those of you that watched last my last episode, I said I would, would show PDFs of uh, the PDFs that I've purchased um, in recent months since I've showed any. Um, but I wanted to show you what I, my plans for Arbitrary August and Cozy Egg Hats B-Day Sal. Um, so that's what I decided to do. And that took way longer than I was expecting um, since I had so little stitching done. But um, I do normally end these with, like I said, I was calling them public service announcement, but now I will call them the science section. And oh, I forgot. I did purchase a few things. And where did I put them? That I haven't showed you yet. Here they are. Um, so, um, okay, segue back to what I should have done first. Um, uh, this is Gathering Berries from Luminous Fiber Arts, Misty Purcell. Um, she is donating the proceeds to this to a fund to help some family members who are dealing with cancer right now as a breast cancer survivor with some, that's, um, something I can certainly empathize with from personal experience. And um, so I actually had, I, um, I bought both PDF and hard version. And um, this is actually gonna go to a friend. Um, and um, yeah, so this is just, this is the cutest thing. And I'm gonna get the, it, it calls for Belle Soie silk, um, over dyed silk, and, and I'm gonna, have Judy as Judy Stick Tarina get me some. So, and then of course, because according to many people on Floss Tube, patterns should not travel alone. Um, Misty had shown in her um, her Floss Tube. Um, that she um, was working on a piece from this one. She's working on the, let's see. Oh yeah, it's this one here. She was working on this one with the B-scap. And I thought it was really cute. So um, she had this in her sh her Etsy shop. But she sh so she, sh blah. she sells other patterns than her own. So not just her own patterns. So it's like a little 
mini online shop. So I decided to, um, to get this too because Brenda and the serial stitchers say buy all the Blackbird. Personally, my version of that is buy all the mermaids. And I'll tell you about that next week because I did something that I probably shouldn't have. I joined another sale. And it's all Michelle Bendy Stitchy's fault. Um, but we're coming up on an hour here. So I'm going to end this in a few minutes here. Um, so I'll talk about that next week um, when I hope I will have time to show you at least some of the PDFs that I have purchased in the, the last couple of months. Um, as I was saying before I remembered that I was going to show you some haul, um, I will be ending these with what I'm going to call the science section rather than public service announcement. Um, as And today's science section is basically this. I had something totally else planned, but um, I'll wait till next week to talk about that. As a science educator, I am have been very distressed about how little people seem to trust science and scientists in, the, I would say, the past five to ten years. It's not just about Trump, right? This has been happening. Um, and I, so part of what I want to do with these science sections is get correct information out there and get information about how science works out there. So when politicians and other non-scientists or even some scientists are just like cuckoo, um, are putting stuff out there and people are sharing it on Facebook, this is what distresses me the most is my friends and family members share this stuff that is just nuts on Facebook. And and I understand, they think they're doing a good thing. They think they're helping to get information out there, but some of it is nuts, totally nuts. Um, and some of it, especially now with COVID, some of it could cause people to die. So anyway, um, so that's what I hope to do with these science sections is, uh, and, and like I said, I hope we get to the point where, you know, some of them could be nature and, you know, what do we know about, I don't know, about hummingbirds and what do we know about, I don't know. So if there's sciencey stuff, especially biology related that you're interested in and you'd want to hear more about or want to learn more about or want to at least know where you could learn more about it, um, let me know. Um, you can you know right in the comments. I do read the comments. Um, I don't always comment back. Depends on how busy I am, but I always try to add like like, and then I finally figured out I can touch the little heart, and it says I love it. Um, so I'll, I'll be using that more often now that I have found that. Um, but um, do let me know if there's topics you want to learn more about. If it's something I feel qualified to talk about or something I know about, I would be happy to to share my knowledge. If it's something that I need to dig a little deeper on before I feel comfortable talking about it, I, I will try to do that. If it's something like I feel like totally unqualified, I, what I will try to do is find some reputable sources and maybe summarize what I've seen in them. So if that sounds good to you, um, let me know. Um, and, and hopefully folks will have stayed till the end. This is can't believe this is going to be an hour by the time I'm done. But again, um, if you've been watching me, welcome back. Thank you very much, uh, especially if you subscribed. And if you're new, I hope you enjoyed uh, my ramblings <laughs> and and the things that I've shown you today and, and that you'll come back. And um, so um, Make sure you take some time to be kind to yourself and don't forget to be kind to your neighbors. Thanks, have a wonderful week. Bye.